Should you buy Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge in 2018? That video is coming up right now. Let's go. So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to should you buy Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge in 2018. First of all, I did do should you buy Samsung Galaxy S7 in 2018. If you want to check that video out, that's the smaller edition. I have that linked down below so you can go ahead and check that video out if you are interested. But today we're going to talk about its bigger brother, the S7 Edge, which also has come down in price point. A quick specs refresh. We do have a 5.5 inch curved OLED display here. It's just stunning in its looks and the way it actually looks in terms of the quality of it. We have a 12 megapixel camera on here. This is a dual pixel AF camera, means super fast, blazing fast autofocus with really crispy shots. Four gigabytes of RAM and either a Snapdragon 820 CPU or the Samsung Exynos. 8890. This one happens to be the Korean model that does have the Exynos 8890. People always say, Nick, get a Exynos Samsung on the channel. And so I did. This is a Snapdragon. And let me tell you, the performance is definitely a little bit better here for an Exynos edition. 3600 milliamp hour battery on here. And this has Android 7.0 Nougat. It should get an update to Android 8.0. If you'd like to see a review on that, drop it down below in the comments. Okay, we got the key specs out of the way. Let's talk about the body, the build, and the design. Now, first of all, the S8 Plus and the S8 are an evolution of the S7 Edge design, as you well can see here. And a lot of people do like its narrow feel. But if you like the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, you're going to really love the S7 Edge. It still has a wider canvas than the one on the S8, which is more narrow but tall. Smaller bezels give the S8 a arguably better design aesthetic. But I do like having this home button on the front versus this fingerprint scanner up at the top of the back of the S8. So, you know, this design is still very fresh in 2018 it doesn't look outdated or old or anything like that i mean these phones almost look identical sans the heart rate sensor being on different sides these phones are not that different in terms of the design so really fresh design still here on the s7 so if you're just buying this purely based on design it's a definite go in my opinion as it won't look that old at all very good stuff here samsung now in terms of the body itself it definitely is delicate so this is a phone that you might want to try to get a case for or at least put a skin or protector on it because as you've seen in this video i almost dropped it twice already it's a very delicate and slippery device now with the glass back in the front you know samsung already had that feel that apple was going for in 2018 with the iphone 8 and 8 plus series back in 2016 when this phone launched so still feels extremely premium and i think it happens to look quite good here with the gold and the coral blue i don't know if this is the color you would go with but if you did this one just looks very sexy in person so i really do enjoy this look and feel here of this coral blue it really is a nice feel overall feels like a thousand bucks in your hand so in 2018 finding this thing you can find it for around 250 to 300 bucks or so i happened to find a really good deal on mine i got it around 200 this phone is a steal for that price point. Okay, so let's talk about the display. And this display has been nothing short of amazing. I mean, the newer Samsung devices did get a little bit warmer. The displays are a little bit better calibrated. But wow, the Samsung S7 Edge still has a stunning display that I'm sure anybody would still really appreciate using or having even here in 2018. It didn't really change that much to the S8. It got a little bit warmer, like I say, a little bit better calibrated. But buying this phone, it's not like you're buying a horrible display. You can also change the display settings here since the Nougat update to put it in 1080p if you want to save some battery or keep it in the 4K mode or the 2K mode, excuse me. And I love having it in the 2K mode. I just leave it there all the time. You can also tweak it to adaptive display, AMOLED cinema, AMOLED photo, and basic. You can mess with the color balance and you have monochromacy modes in the developer options. So overall, no matter what wallpapers or whatever videos you're watching on here, it's a pretty great experience when it comes to display. And what I like about this one is it says 16 by nine. So you get to see the full view of YouTube videos when you are watching them, but everything just really looks good on S7 Edge. And definitely my recommendation, this is one of the main reasons I would even get this phone in 2018 is the display. And along with that display comes, well, of course, the name, the Edge Panel, which to me, I don't really use that much, but if you do like the Edge Panel, it is there. You can also change the settings of it, like the handle settings and things like that. You can have, you know, Task Edge, Apps Edge, People Edge. You can download more. It's really a feature-packed display. So 
this is one of the main reasons if you're looking for a phone, you know, secondhand for a good price, the S7 Edge should be right up there at the top of your list because it, of all the stuff it does offer. Okay, so let's talk about software with the S7 Edge. Now, you are running a very similar feel to what you have on the Note 8 right now and the S8 Plus. However, they kept the older icons and they didn't put on the exact experience version from the infinity wallpapers and you know display and all that type of stuff from the S8 Plus. So what I'm trying to say there is that although this is NuGet, it still has some of the older looking icons from the S7 when it first launched and stuff like that. So, you know, it's kind of weird that, you know, it's not really consistent, kind of like what Apple does. The Samsung S7 might have 7.0 NuGet, but a lot of the icons look a little bit different than these here on the Samsung S7 Edge. For example, the camera icon. You see the difference in the camera icon? That inconsistency is something that I don't really like about Samsung in general, but at the same time, this device has the ability to theme it out, make it however you want it to look, so you can pretty much change the look and feel, meaning that it shouldn't feel too outdated, but if you're planning on keeping this two to three years, the software probably will start to feel pretty old. So this is probably a phone I would recommend if you're only going to keep it a couple of years, but three, four years, I don't know if I could recommend this when it comes to the software department. Now, in terms of the features of the software, it is loaded. I mean, you still have the pop view right here. You could do stuff like this, multitasking features everywhere for the S7 Edge. You have similar features like the Note 8 where you can like crop things out and give you that experience that, you know, the Note 7 was giving you, but they had to put in some note features like the GIF animations. You could do that here on this device because the Note 7, you, we all know what happened to the Note 7. But really, I mean, this device right here, has some great software features built in. We know Samsung throws in the kitchen sink, everything in the kitchen sink, but again, they don't really keep it consistent with the newer experience version. Like the S9, for example, is gonna come out with Samsung 9.0 experience version with new emojis. Good luck on getting that on your S7 Edge. It might take some time. So software is iffy for me, but in terms of its overall performance on the day-to-day, -day, a lot of people like to say, well, Samsung's lag so much. This Exynos version barely has any lag. Yes, there's some micro jitters here and there, but in terms of lag, no lag at all. I can use this phone day-to-day -day with no problems in terms of the performance. Okay, so I wanna talk about performance a little bit more. Now, if you are gonna buy an S7 Edge secondhand right now, I do recommend you try to find the Korean model with LTE bands that has the Exynos edition processor, just simply because the Snapdragon overheats, in my opinion, on the S7 series, and it also has you know a little bit worse battery life, and it's just not as fast. So overall, the Snapdragon version is kind of trash compared to the Exynos version, and I could say that because I use the Snapdragon S7, and this device was performing way better than the S7 on the Snapdragon version. So I would recommend that from my experience. Now in terms of speed, there's no really lag on this device when it comes to day-to-day -day stuff. And you can see right here, it's just blazing fast when it comes to everything it does. And what I do like about the S7 Edge is that it still has that quick launch from the home button. Now Samsung retained that feature with the S8, but the problem with the S8 is it's on the side. So to me, it's not as ergonomic as you know this one on the front button. So you have to go like this, one, two, to go ahead and open it up. Now, that's pretty useful, but I still think that, you know, when it's in your pocket, it's just more intuitive to just go like that and hit it from the front. Just a little small thing I wanted to note. Now, one thing about the performance is, although it's really fast, if you don't have a case on this phone, I found that there's a lot of accidental touches happening with the My S7 Edge. So, you know, you'll be scrolling through and you'll be like, why is it not moving? And that's because your palm will sometimes hit the edge of the screen. That actually got better on the newer Samsungs. So get a case for this phone if you don't want those accidental touches to happen. But in terms of RAM management, it's pretty good here on the Exynos Edition. As you can see, boom, no reloads there, no reloads there. And I don't have that many apps open, but there's not too bad of reloading going on here with the Exynos model once again. So performance, get this model. If you still want okay performance, but you want a better price, you might find a better price on the Snapdragon model. So let's discuss a little bit about the storage capacity. Now you can you know, remove the SIM card tray and add some expandable memory here. But if you go with the Snapdragon edition, you only get 32 gigs. If you go with this edition, which is the Exynos, you get the 64. So it seems like I'm just you know praising this Exynos model, which I am because it basically gives you an overall better device. So you get 64 gigs here. And of course, you know, if you're not using a memory card, it's easy to burn through this stuff. But overall, I find 64 gigabytes to be pretty much the minimum you might want to have in 2018. So just another reason to get the, you know, international model 
of the S7 Edge. So storage capacity in terms of speed, it's pretty fast. I mean, I don't have too much of an issue with transferring. One issue I do have is that this device still has micro USB and USB-C was already a technology when this phone came out. They should have just threw it in here on the S7 Edge, but they didn't. So you still have micro USB, but I'm sure a lot of you do have some of those laying around. And this device can still fast charge and wireless charge, even though it doesn't have the USB-Cs. So definitely has some good fast charging and the storage capacity is pretty much on point here. You can also attach things to the bottom of this device, which will allow you to transfer files through like a adapter and stuff like that. So you can do a lot of things here on this Android device. Okay, so let's get on to the camera. The camera is a 12 megapixel shooter. It can do 4K recording and Ah, oh, man, this is a really good camera. I actually don't know why, but for some reason, I kind of prefer the photos that come out of the S7 over the S8, even though the S8 technically is a little bit better. I really just like the photos that I got from this device. Now, they're super sharp, super vibrant, and of course, you know, they might not be the most accurate when you want to talk in terms of accuracy, but look at the detail you get on these photos. I mean, it's phenomenal here, even though this phone is two years old now. I mean, Phones have been good for a long time, and that's why buying a flagship here at these used price points or refurbished, it's not really a big deal. I mean, look at that quality you're getting on the photo. It's fantastic. So, yes, camera is a win here. And also, what I really like is, like I say, the quick launch. But what I really like is the software. They brought pretty much the S8 software here when it comes to the camera. You can also do pro modes. You can download modes. You can flip it over to the front no problem and it just looks great hello how you doing over there and uh, you can see front-facing camera front-facing camera is not too great on here samsung needs to work on their front-facing cameras i think oneplus even has a better front-facing camera but in terms of that rear camera pretty nice stuff here and definitely a recommend for me with the s7 edge in 2018 okay so let's talk about audio here with the s7 edge so i'm gonna go to one of my videos and try to play it as loud as i can Again, something that's coming to the S9 is the dual speakers. Very easy to cover that speaker up again. S9 is going to bring dual speakers, but if you buy an older Samsung device, you're guaranteed getting a single speaker. Now, don't get me wrong. That speaker is actually quite loud. It's a little bit tinny. It's not the most bassy or full feeling feature. So Samsung really doesn't have a great speaker set. I don't think this is the phone you might want to get if you want the best speaker. And it's a little bit drowned out because of the IP68 waterproofing on this device, which I will take a little bit drowned out audio for waterproofing. But one area that you are going to have a great experience is having a headphone jack because not only do you have a headphone jack with your Samsung S7 Edge, you also have equalizer settings in the you know music settings that will really allow you to get the best you can out of that headphone jack. So overall, the audio experience is half and half. I would have liked to have dual speakers on the device, but having a headphone jack still made up for that. So I'm okay with the audio overall for this device. Okay, so let's talk battery life. Now, the battery life actually got you know a little bit better on the S8, even though the battery life got smaller or the battery size got smaller on the S8 Plus than the S7 Edge. But that doesn't mean the S7 Edge doesn't have great battery life, especially on this edition. I've been seeing some pretty good battery life here from the S7 Edge. And, you know, it's not like this device is, you know, going to give you, you know, problems throughout the day. You're going to get through the day with the S7 Edge. You also have the mid and the max modes here on this device allow you to save power. So while fast charging does help, this device should still get you through most of the day. Now, if you're using it heavily or you got a lot of stuff running, it might drain down a little bit faster. But for me, I'm, I'm getting from like nine o'clock in the morning to like nine o'clock at night. So it might not be a full warrior like going into two days, but definitely a day long phone here when it comes to the battery life. Just make sure you don't get a device with a battery that has a battery health problem. So maybe ask the seller before you buy this, like, is there something wrong with the battery? Is the battery okay? Because this is a sealed in battery, unlike some older Samsungs where you could take it out. You can't do it here for the S7 Edge. So let's talk about the phone calling experience here with the S7 Edge. Now, again, with that edge screen, if you don't have a case, sometimes you could accidentally press stuff with your face. So again, I recommend a case for the S7 Edge or a skin, you know, to be to be safe with this device. But still, a case is gonna help you from doing those accidental touches. But the signal strength, I don't have a SIM card in here right now, was pretty strong. You know, I found myself to have some good calling experience when it comes to hearing people through the earpiece. And Samsung has this feature where you are like talking on the phone and you could raise the volume in the earpiece. So it's a pretty cool experience there. HD voice, nice stuff. So calling 
on Samsung devices has been pretty good for some good time here and I've had no issues no matter what Samsung device I am using the Note 8, the S7, the S8, it doesn't matter. It's been pretty good for some time and the S7 Edge was no exception. I also like how you can swipe to the right to call people and swipe to the left to call people as well. So I would give this phone a go for phone calls. It's not going to beat Motorola or anything like that, but I would still give it a go. So what is my conclusions? Yes, I've been praising this phone this whole review and for good reasons. I think this is one of the best Samsung values you can buy right now. If you're just looking for a phone on the cheap that's, you know, secondhand and it gives you a really good deal. I mean, you get so much of what the new phones offer. I mean, you can literally buy this phone and you won't miss most of the features. You might be a little bit, you know, like, oh, that design's a little nicer on the S8, but the feature set is almost the same. And with the S9, rumored not to be changing that much from the S8, and this is already similar to the S8, well, what does that equate to? That equates to having a phone that's still a pretty good bargain here with the S7 Edge. If you got anything from this video, just do me a favor, do yourself a favor, get yourself the Exynos model, you won't regret it. If you found this video helpful, enjoyable, informing, entertaining, do me a favor, click that like button for me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns down below, and uh, yeah, have a great day. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Be sure to be well and peace.